Welcome to the Breath of Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. I'm Dr. Colby Matlock, and I'm joined by my wife, Erica Matlock, and this is a very special, exclusive program where we get to introduce our newest pastor and pastoral team to the Breath of Life family, Pastor Alexis Myers and her husband, George Myers, and we want to share this moment with you. So without further ado, let's welcome, for the very first time, preparing for our October 9th intro to Pastor Myers, to the Breath of Life Church. Welcome to the Breath of Life Seventh-day Adventist Church. How are you doing today? Pastor Matlock, I have to first say <laughs> thank you. And Sister Matlock, thank you so much for the warm welcome. I, we are so excited to be joining the Breath of Life family. We are well. I'm well. Are you feeling? I'm feeling great. We're I have, good. Yeah, I have to say I love the sound of the Matlocks and the Myers. Come on, Eminem. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It has a ring to it. Yes, it indeed. It. Listen, I'm so excited and blessed to be joined in ministry by a dynamic duo. So what we need to do briefly, can you just share a little bit about who Pastor Myers is, who's George Myers? So Breath of Life can begin to build a relationship virtually yes, with you. Absolutely. That's a, that's a, a lot in it. So um, I uh, personally, I'm a really warm person. I'm from South Jersey, born and raised Amen. in this area, well, in the Jersey area. My husband, on the other hand, I would tell you, Ray, go ahead. Oh, sure. I mean, um, this is my hometown, the DMV area. All right. Uh, my, my whole family is from the D.C. area. I grew up just down the road in Camp Springs, Maryland. Okay. okay. So I uh, always consider Breath of Life to be a part of my backyard, and um, I'm excited to just be in the building and be a part of the Breath of Life family. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Amen. And I know, George, we share similar yes, yes. background home churches. Can yes. you just give a shout out to my home church real quick? <laughs> well, you know, I would take the time to give a shout out to the DuPont Park Seventh-day Adventist Amen. Church. Amen. Um, I spoke with a few members already and we reflected on our times winning a lot of basketball games. So. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Um, definitely my home church and I'm a, a, a part of me for sure. Awesome. Listen, uh, Pastor Myers, uh, I'm, I'm leaving and coming to the area from where you South Jersey. So yes. I've been there for the last 10 years in Camden, New Jersey. Of course, the Glassboro, all of the churches have a warm spot in my heart. I spend a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in that area. So I'm excited to have you here with us. Can you talk to us about like your call to ministry, your yeah. passion for ministry? Because you're entering into ministry yeah. in uncharted territory. Come on. It's a pandemic. Yeah. But we don't make excuses. Mm -hmm. God is going to let this church on fire. Yes. So just talk to me a little bit about how you view ministry, this entire experience. What does it mean to Pastor Myers? Sure, absolutely. Thank you for that question, by the way. As we all know that that question could go on and on and on. Yes. But I won't, family. I'm not going to do that to you. And sure, I've always um, been passionate about ministry. I started preaching my first sermon at the age of 16, actually, at a Bay Area campery. Wow. You know how the wow. Pathfinders come together. Yes. So it was then yes. when um, I preached my first sermon and then other sister churches, you know how we do, start mm -hmm. to hear. And mm -hmm. then I, I got asked to speak at other churches. But um, I actually didn't believe that women shouldn't be in ministry. Mm. I, that was something that I, I didn't think of growing up. Wow. I didn't see wow. that. So I didn't think that it should be until I got to Oakwood and I became um, a chaplain of the campus. Wow. And I saw um, a part of that duty uh, and responsibility was um, to, you know, just make sure that the spiritual care of everybody was okay. Mm -hmm. And so I go in the library one day and I see a group of uh, girls in um, just studying together. And I, I introduced myself and just checking on how they were. And I asked them their majors. And pastor, they told me that they were all theology majors. Wow. That blew my mind. And so having this passion for God and just always sharing and preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, it just, I couldn't shake it off. Mm. I could, the call came with me everywhere I went. Wow. So as I asked these girls, this is coming to a close now, mm -hmm. as I asked them their <laughs> major, they told me that they were theology. Um, after I finished with that meeting, I left and I heard God say to me, I don't need you, but I want you. Wow. Mm. And wow. that just humbled me. 
I still didn't change my major from physical therapy to theology, but after many, many more divine appointments and encounters, I realized that I can't shake this thing off. Mm. I have to accept it. And once I did, I've experienced an everlasting peace and God have opened doors for me. Amazing. And so I'm not turning back and I'm here <laughs> today with the Breath of Life family and we are just excited to be with you all. Amen. Wonderful, beautiful. Yeah. Erica, you have any questions? Do, do you mind if we uh, flip right. that question can, on can you Can we guys? flip it on you? Yeah. <laughs> hear about your sure. call to ministry? Yes. That's My right. call to ministry, I think this is the same thing. I come from a background of educators. Yeah. So my mom, my dad, my sister, my uncles, that's, that's what the calling is. So I just wanted to be able to give back to um, contribute to society in a meaningful way. And so I believe that was the foundation. Yeah. I see my parents... Uh, my whole life, invest in other people, uh, youth, um, you know, and that's kind of what I wanted to do. I didn't know that ministry would take that shape, yeah. but I wanted to spend my life bettering the quality of life of other people. Awesome, awesome. And I have to uh, ask you a question, yeah. too, if you don't sure. mind me uh, just chiming in. So we've seen your bio on the website, you mm -hmm. know, we've uh, the Breath of Life family have seen you preach from time to time, yes. but you know, with the uncertain times that we are in of this pandemic, mm. you know, it has you kind of put a little restrictions on how we interact with one another. So I gotta ask for mm -hmm. my family, who is Pastor Matlock? You know, uh, who, if if you could relate yourself to someone in the Bible, uh, a little bit about your characteristics and personality. Excellent. Let us yeah, get to know you. I think um, that's an excellent question, Pastor Myers. I would have to identify with my brother in Christ. It would be John, uh. Uh, the apostle. Not John the Baptist, but, okay. but John. Uh, he, he was the young, one of the youngest apostles. Uh, he followed Jesus closely. Um, from the book of Revelation to the book of John, it was all about love. He mm. was passionate. He was in love with the ministry, the call, and his Savior, right? So... I look at the, 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 the before and after. He has a long tenure as an apostle. And so if there was a person in the Bible that I would like to compare myself to, that I see a lot of yes. commonalities, it would be John. He was behind the scenes, but he was passionate, and he, he loved Jesus, and God was able to use him absolutely. to do magnificent things. Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Thank That's you awesome. so much for that. Listen, let's let's also segue. I know that uh, family's important. Mm -hmm. Every time we come into ministry, we accept the call, Pastor Myers, but we also are connected with our significant others. So talk to me about how, I, I know you were recently married, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yes, yes, Very yes. recent. <laughs> Congratulations. You're still in your honeymoon period. Yes. Amen. Uh, we, we're excited for you. We've been married for a few decades, uh, <laughs> but talk to us Praise about the, the importance of marriage, family, and, and how that impacts you in ministry. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, family is definitely a God thing. Uh, we could choose our friends, but you know we can't choose our family. Right, God right, does that. Right. And so um, family is really important, not only to our personal lives and spiritual walk, walk with God, uh, but family is important to us as we are here in church. We have a church family where we need one another, especially during times like this. Um, and so as we are walking in ministry, uh, there are definitely some values that we can take with us uh, of having family, being the support that we need from one another, especially in marriage, as we are learning yes. and will continue to learn um, of just the value of, of not only just being with one another because God put us together, but really what does that mean, doing life together mm. as a church family and as a family relationally? Amen. Yeah. And, and if I may add, um, honey, um, Please do. you know, I'm learning very quickly, Pastor Matlock, <laughs> that behind every great man is an even greater woman. Come on. <laughs> I mean, so, Beside, behind. Beside, above. behind, for sure, yes. for sure. Um, and um, for you, uh, First Lady, <laughs> Mrs. Matlock, I would love to know about some of your passions, um, either related to ministry or outside of ministry, <laughs> or what drives you every day. Yeah, um, one of the things that I'm super passionate about is uh, reading. Mm. I'm a reader. So in our house, where I, I hardly ever watch TV. That's I don't true. think I'm a TV watcher at all. Um, I spend a lot of time reading. And 
I just have this wonderful library of, um, of books that I love to share with women in the church. And so my former church, I did a book club and um, just, just some really great reads oh, that beautiful. we were able to get into um, there as women of God. Um, another, another thing that I'm really passionate about is um, I work a lot. So I'm an assistant pr uh, principal in an elementary school. I love children, young children, the education of children, and um, I love doing what is best for kids. And so I've spent my life's work as a professional serving children and their families. Oh, praise God. So I also work in education, which is interesting that you mentioned that, so we'll have to talk some more. <laughs> awesome. Um, Tell us that. a little bit about your career. Wow. Well, um, right now I am a kindergarten teacher. Um, I love every uh, part of it. I, it's not something that I plan to do, but I've always, always been passionate about education, uh, similar to you. Um, and I'm hoping that as my career evolves, I'll be able to uh, serve communities that look like mine and my, like me. Um, and be able to provide some of the resources that aren't always available um, to uh, people that look like us. So um, that's where my passion lies also. You know what's incredible? I'm not making any of this up. Just last night, um, Erica, we were talking about kindergarten teachers. Mm. And she said, and I, I don't want to quote you. What, what did you talk? Because I was like, what? Give me the energy or the vibe of what a kindergarten teacher is. This is last night. What would you say? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like kindergarten teachers are the most important teachers in the wow. world. They're she the child's first learning experience. They're so, so important for helping that. kids right. to um, develop um, stamina, to stay on task, social skills, those beginning academic skills, and to help even almost like bridge the gap between parents and then um, P, uh, learning how to trust adults outside of the home. So I love my kindergarten teachers. I never taught kindergarten. Uh -huh. I've taught every elementary grade, even up through middle school. I've never taught kindergarten, but if I ever had an opportunity to do so, I think I would take on wow, wow. the tough challenge <laughs> of being a kindergarten teacher. I love those kids so much, and being a kindergarten teacher, I applaud you. Oh, thank yes. you. It's an important work. I appreciate it, and I express those same thoughts. Um, very passionate about uh, being a kindergarten teacher and being the introduction to education for the children. But at any time, if you want to come in and tie some shoes <laughs> <laughs> and put on band-aids, uh, yes. uh, you're more than welcome <laughs> to Dry come check me out. Yep. For sure, for sure. Absolutely. But I also wanted to ask you, Pastor Matlock, mm -hmm. as far as, you know, um, we're talking about education, and these are the children of our communities, the children of our future. So um, what are you passionate about in ministry? What is a real burden for you? Where uh, If you could, you could always do something about this in our communities and in the world. What is a burden for you? Yeah, I think um, over 20 years in ministry, you start to narrow your focus yeah. on what, you know, what would be the best investment of your time and resources. So I would say it's three areas um, that, that push me in ministry now. Uh, first, I would say evangelism, mm. because I'm a first generation Adventist. Wow. I, I don't have time to share my experience and testimony of how we arrived at DuPont, but uh, it was Bible workers that kept us there, because when you come into an environment and you don't know anyone, uh, that's your lifeline between, you know, the church and, and, and basically um, uh, staying focused and connected. So I would say evangelism drives me. Number two would be community service. Yes. Um, and that's, that's multifaceted. I'm a social justice yes. guy. Yes. So I'm all about justice, but service as well. So I, I want to be able to partner with, serve with, um, our communities, and you know, finally, it will have to go back to education. Mm. I'm a product of uh, Pine Forge, of course, Oakwood Andrews, <laughs> all of our great institutions right. that help shape and mold who you see today before you, and I think we all have that experience. So um, I'm all about investing in youth, young adult, and just planting those seeds and watering them and see what God does. So those would be the three areas of impact and focus for myself. Awesome. Listen, I think we have just scratched the surface, and this is just an introduction. There will be many more conversations to come, but we do want to let you know that on October 9, we will have a special inaugural service for Pastor Myers, 
and I am pleased to be able to share. We expect, you know, support from our church in prayer. Uh, and of course, the Glassboro Church family will, will be in the building. So we're praying for great things. And God called you for such a time as this. Amen. Breath of Life, we are blessed to have with us the Myers. And they're going to partner with the Matlocks. And we're going to continue to serve this great church. May God bless you. Thank you so much for your prayers. And we're going to experience the power of God in the upcoming months. God bless you.